Welcome to our Hostly University webinar today. Thanks for the thumbs up. That makes me feel good just to get rolling here. Um, excited to be with you um, here to uh, really dig into our guidebooks today. And, and uh, David was reminding me that uh, sometimes our guidebooks don't get as much love, but we definitely want to talk with you about you know, some of the best ways to drive and generate revenue with guidebooks. I'm joined today by a couple of my uh, esteemed associates here, Mr. J.M. Rivera with Odium Reynolds um, down in Puerto Rico. Welcome, J.M. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, my pleasure. David, David, do you even need an introduction at this point? Uh, David is uh, the man when it comes to guidebooks and, and is, of course, my fearless leader here at Hostly. Thank you for joining us here today, David. Thanks, Bryce. I, I sure do need an introduction these days because you're speaking with all our customers now and not me anymore. So it's good to connect with everyone again. And thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. And uh, and of course, myself, Bryce Carpenter here to take you through generating driving revenue with guidebooks, especially, you know, right now when, uh, you know, I feel like in, in most of my conversations with customers, David, as you mentioned, um, additional revenue, driving direct bookings, those, those are big themes. Those are coming up right now, and, uh, and, and customers are really looking for ways to um, get more, uh, you know, uh, from each guest and from each opportunity that they interact with. And so we're going to go ahead and dive right in here. For anyone who isn't familiar, uh, most of you probably are customers, but there are some folks on that aren't. Uh, we here at Hostly really um, have two key products that we offer. We offer a property management platform and we also offer our digital guidebooks. They will focus on our guidebooks, but there is integration between the two. And, and that's really important when it comes to automation and, and, um, and really serving your guests. So we'll talk a little bit more about this, but um, we're, we're super proud here. Probably the main reason to share this slide is that uh, for 2023, we are one of the few preferred plus software partners with Airbnb. So this is a, a new and improved category that we're really excited about uh, and a certification here at Hostfully. Um, but of course, we work with all of the channels and, and love all of our channel partners and, uh, and have received some great recognition throughout the industry. So. Um, we are gonna to focus today on our guidebooks. And, and so just a quick walkthrough for anyone that isn't familiar, our digital guidebooks um, are really a great way to engage your guests and um, share a variety of information, including recommendations, um, house manual and instructions on, on the home, arrival and departure instructions, as well as your own custom categories, which we'll dig in a bit more today. Um, our digital guidebooks are mobile friendly, so your guests can view them on their phone or their tablet or their browser, however they'd like to get access to those. They're built to scale and, uh, and can be very personalized and, and a great way to um, drive brand awareness, which we'll talk about today and is really an important strategy when it comes to generating revenue. Um, and then in addition to that, you can collect guest emails and additional information for remarketing and, and use our marketplace to drive some, some additional ancillary sales. And so we'll dig into all of that a bit more today. Um, as far as personalizing, personalizing and automating, our guidebooks uh, allow you to share personal and, and automate that personal information with your guests. So things like your door code, the PIN number, um, you can customize guest first and last name through that communication, as well as a variety of check-in instructions. That's all able to feed right into your, your digital guidebooks. Um, and, you know, again, brings a real professional orientation to your guest communication, what you're sharing. Um, you can share direct links to a variety of information. We'll talk a bit about that. Um, as well as some of the creation steps and setting up, you know, some of the different components of the guidebooks. We'll dig into that today um, for you. And finally, we'll just wrap up here with a nice testimony from Mr. Craig Reed, um, and we'll jump right into our guidebooks now. Anything I missed there on kind of setting the stage for guidebooks, David? I know you're the guidebook king. Uh, no, very well said. Uh, your comment earlier about the, the uh, property management platform as well and reaching Airbnb preferred plus status. I just want to give a shout out to my buddy Flash 
over here. Uh, we had a little celebration over the weekend. I don't know if there's a way to send the link up, but people should check out uh, Hostfully's LinkedIn or my personally my personal LinkedIn, and you'll see uh, some fun photos of myself and Flash celebrating the the new coveted preferred plus status that Airbnb just put out. Excellent. And David has a lot of Airbnb swag, you guys. So if you did not see that, I, I'm not talking about like a pencil and and maybe a magnet and things like I, I think that when they open an Airbnb museum, David, they're coming to you first uh, to supply. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah, awesome. Great. Well, let's go ahead without any further ado and kind of jump in here. We're going to dive right into um, some key strategies, again, to drive revenue. And the first that we want to talk here about is your guidebook splash page. So this is the page that the guest arrives to the first time that they visit your digital guidebook. And that splash page is designed to do a couple of things. One, kind of set the stage for your brand and, and your look and feel, as you can see there on the left-hand side. Uh, this is a picture from uh, JM's company, Odium Rentals. This is their um, splash page. So you land there, you see a, a nice image of the property. Um, the next screen can be the um, rental agreement. So you can share and, and gain agreement from your guests right there um, on the rental agreements. And then the third and final um, tab that you see here is to capture their information and specifically email address. And the great thing here is that you're not only capturing information for a primary guest, but if you have additional guests staying in the home, um, your guidebook should be shared with all of them. And, and so in, in that you can capture their information, their email address, and, and we'll now be able to remarket to them. And so great way to grab that, presents the first time, and then they're able to move forward from there. Now this stat I was super impressed with um, over the course of about the last year, a little less than a year, um, JM and team have captured about 700 unique email addresses. And so I did a little bit of pencil math here on, on what that likely could be worth. And, and so with 700 emails, a 1% conversion is, is pretty conservative for an, an email send. Um, you can certainly do better than that, but that equals about seven bookings. And ironically enough, I promise I didn't plan this, I went back um, for the year and looked at the average stay value. This is just rent uh, for, for all of, of Jan's reservations. It was $777. So um, per send, that pencils out to about $5,400 in um, value and capturing those, those email addresses and, and being able to talk to those guests. So Jan, maybe I'll, I'll kick it over to you really quick to kind of share um, how you've seen that come to life or, or just any kind of observations you've had in, in, in capturing and collecting all of that information over the past year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you for, for having me. One of, the, one, one of our main focus is to uh, generate as many emails as possible, especially when it comes to platforms that do, that do not share email and, and phone number addresses. And why this is a perfect example, because we're able to retarget our customers, our clients uh, over and over again. Right. This is, a, you know, uh, this example, it's really great because this is just in one cent. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we yeah. usually, you know, per, we're not that you know much active. Right. Uh, in terms of email marketing, but we sent an average, you know, between four and six emails per guest throughout, you know, a, a year, I would say. So, you know, in theory, as, 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 as we work in that conversion, because 1% is very conservative, right? As we, you know, gain a little more traction and, and conversion and, and property count, that, that number should should go back. And, you know, you, you pencil it back to how much it costs, right? Um, you know, a guidebook, which I, I, I think is $5 per month or something, uh, if you're in the enterprise level. And then, you know, the math just, you know, really works out. Not only that, it gives you a sense of, of professionalism that we've noticed with our guests. Some, uh, we have, a uh, think, three or four reviews in which people comment on the guidebooks like, oh, how fantastic it was the guidebook to, you know, get the recommendations, uh, you know, the, the local gems and that stuff. And, you know, we use it. And, and again, uh, emails are, are very important for, for us as we, you know, grow and get a little bit better at this. You know, those numbers should should uh, should increase in theory. Yeah, and speaking of emails, Jam, I'll just share real quick since we're on the topic, a couple examples. 
um, that, that you're sharing with guests. And, and um, just to give a little partner integration shout out to our integration with MailChimp, um, where, where you can push that guest information and then conduct those sends, you know, and set, set up those sends to go out. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, uh, maybe we'll start on the left-hand side with um, kind of your, your newsletter sign up and, and your direct guest offer there. Share a little bit with us about that. Yeah, so there's a few examples of what we use uh, for email communications. The, for, the first one on the left is just a welcome email. This is, comes from people that signs up for our newsletter and our website and the pop-up on the bottom uh, footer. Uh, and essentially it's to drive awareness and, and encourage booking. So it's just a, you know, normal, you've seen it pretty much everybody has it out there. Uh, and you sign up and you get that first email, you know, we are able to brand it with, you know, our name, picture, and a little message. And then, you know, the promo code that people can use it. Uh, and like Bryce said, this all comes from MailShip. We have integrated MailShip to, to hostfully, uh, even though, you know, the guidebook, we have an integration, which is uh, the guidebooks to Google Sheets, to Google Sheets, to MailShip through Zapier, which uh, hostfully is also integrated with. And so uh, with this, we got, we populate everything into MailChimp. And then every time there's, there's a sign up, then this email goes automatically, automatically goes out. The one on the right, we recently redid our website, you know, a few, uh, a month or so ago. Uh, and, you know, we see we wanted uh, to share with people. So we, you know, made this, you know, a very simple, uh, you know, email, email that went out. Uh, I think it was last week, it just introducing our new website. This went out to the uh, to, to seven, 800 people that we have in our list. And it was, you know, nice to see the traction. So we think we generated about two bookings from, from that email list that went out. Uh, which is a little bit less than, you know, that one percent. But you know, there's still. I, last time I checked last week, uh, so so I haven't checked, you know, after that. So yeah, it's it's an example. Other examples that we could use that we use is on on the anniversary, right? If you stay with us, you know, last year you're gonna you know receive an email about you know two or three weeks before you you stayed so basically if you're thinking of planning to come into puerto rico just to be fresh of mind uh in some instances we collect uh you know they uh you know data birth so we would send you know uh, a small token of appreciation to guests and then the the, the possibilities are infinite how you want to you know market we also do new property announcements whenever there's new properties out there we do that uh, whenever there's a struggling property we we put that property up and we market that property to email uh you know through email marketing and social uh you know as well so the, you know the, the the possibilities are infinite you know pro new property announcement the new city that you launch a new a new amenity uh the that you launch a new property so you know they're they're very infinite of what you can do with this. Great, and that anniversary I'll just mention because I've talked to a few customers recently about that as well. You know when you're when you're looking at setting up that anniversary message, um, you know obviously pay attention to your booking window, you know too, and that and that's changed uh, for a lot of customers I've talked to. Whether you look at kind of you know during the COVID years to even after the fact, maybe they're seeing a little bit more last minute um, stays now. Um, so just uh, something to pay attention to your timing there as well when you're taking a look at, at automating some of those return guest sends. Great. Um, so let's jump over really quick. I want to we, we wanted to make this webinar practical as well as as sharing some great information and results here uh, from JM. So we're also going to go ahead and share um, how to set up some of these features. And so the splash page really quick, we're going to hop over um, into JM's account um, and, and want to walk through that with you really quick. Now, the splash page is um, set up as a, as a theme. And so um, when, when you're trying to, you know, kind of customize your look and feel, um, when you're trying to customize, um, you know, consistency across your guidebooks, this theme section on the left-hand side, you can see the gear cog here, is a great way to do that. And so you can see Jams built a theme here for Odium Rentals. And when we click in, um, we have quite a few options. I'm going to, I'll come back to this page a little bit later, but just want to jump down here really quick to the question you'll see that says, do you want your guests to accept terms um, before viewing? And so here's where you create the splash screen. And um, so you can see JM has that splash screen pulling up here. Um, you can um, make emails required. We don't currently you know, have that set up to be required, but it can be a required field. And then you can also customize 
Um, the terms, you can see his links here to his rental agreement. Um, you can see the label for the I agree button and the color of that button. And um, you're able to customize those, those elements of the splash page. And so allows you to line that up with your brand and, and also with the look and feel of, of your guidebook. So pretty quick and pretty easy to set up and, um, and, and something that I would certainly encourage you to do if you're not using that already. Um, within your guidebooks, just hop in there to themes and, and set that up. Anything else to add, uh, David or JM, on splash pages? Well, not, not to add on splash pages, but one thing that I would encourage that we haven't done, and actually it was a David idea when we met in Puerto Rico, is that uh, once you agree and land on the, on the arrival page, uh, there's a possibility, right, David, that you can put a video uh in in the welcome message right right below the property if you hit uh any specific uh any any guidebook uh right in the bottom where you have you know your welcome message you can you know uh you know put a video in there which was you know right there where it says phone and an email and hello yeah right there it's, it's an idea that was from david I went back. We haven't done it, but we need to do it. You can put a video right there. Just welcome in people, and then it gives you more, you know, brand awareness, right? The, the more people hear about your brand, about your name, maybe next time they will Google you, or next time they have a friend, they will tell, hey, just Google search for this for these people for this company. So it's a it's another opportunity that you can brand with with your guidebooks. Awesome. Yes, great comment. So that is part of the intro card when you look at the cards when you're making the guidebook like recommendations and parking so that's in the intro card and videos are real easy in general with the guidebook if you uh just have a youtube video you just take the the youtube url and you and you paste it in and we do all the work to kind of make it render correctly with the the video embedded in so you can do that in the intro section as well as in any of the other sections so in the house manual area, if you want to do a video on how to turn the TV on or how to use the laundry, uh, or even in the recommendations, a video about one of your favorite restaurants or a tour of some beautiful murals or something, uh, you can add it in all over and it really adds a nice element. Great. Yeah, right here, uh, we're in the intros. Yeah, go ahead, David. Yeah, I'll, I'll just also um, take a moment while we're talking about the splash page to, to answer uh, a couple questions that have come in about it. Um, one, this is available uh, in the, uh, the subscription version. So the free version of our guidebook, you do need to upgrade uh, to PowerHost or above um, to have the splash page. Uh, and then it is uh, stored under reports in the dashboard uh, on the left. It's kind of that, that, last, um, call, that last little icon. And that's where you go to export uh, all the emails that come in. So you can export it to a CSV file and then use it with any uh, email tool like MailChimp or, or anything else. Great, and I just showed that on the screen for anyone following along there, so excellent. Okay, let's jump back here and jump into our next topic, which is the marketplace. And, and uh, I, th I think this is particularly interesting because this is um, um, kind of, uh, money that, that might be left on the table if, if you're not already using and engaging with the marketplace. And so the marketplace is uh, available within guidebooks. It, it also is available within the property management platform as well. And uh, Jam, when, when I saw this number, I was quite surprised because I, I actually um, you know, didn't realize that uh, you, know, you all were generating you know, this, this much revenue through just a, additional offerings in the marketplace, but it's the equivalent of about 2% of total revenue. For, so for anyone joining on the call, if you can imagine, obviously you probably know your total revenue for the year, another 2% where um, there's no owner split. So you're essentially keeping 100%. Jam, that's, that's pretty huge. So um, yeah, I, yeah, kudos to you and the team. And it's essentially free money if you think about it, right? Uh, you know, the the check the check in it was already going to happen. The checkout is already going to happen. It's just a matter of when was it going to happen. Is it going to happen later, or sooner? So, uh, you know, this is money. My background is in revenue management for airlines, and airlines, as you know, uh, they've been driving ancillary revenue 
you know, for, for a long time through baggage fees, change fees, you know, pretty much anything that is not Southwest, you will get charged a fee for something. And so uh, this is taking a page out of that, how we unbundle what we sell and try to, you know, at, you know, provide some add-ons like early check-in, late checkout, pack and play, uh, uh, crib for, for infants. Uh, we do... Um, we do a few other. We do uh, uh, birthday balloons and a few others. That you know, definitely the late checkout, early checkout are the ones that obviously are, account for the most. Uh, we got the pet fee right, early check-in, late checkout, the air mattress package, and uh, you know the balloons that we had. We had it. We had to put it back up. But you know, uh, you know, the possibilities are infinite. You can sell through it. You know, a, a pre-stock. You know, uh, you know, fridge with you know juices, eggs, or whatever it is that that the guests might want. So, you know, you can, it's, it's basically like a shopping center is the way that I like to see it. Um, and again, you can pretty much sell everything. Early check and late checkout are very easy, right? Um, our check checkout time is 11, late checkout is at one, early check in is at uh, two, regular check in is at four. So we kind of, you know, give, give the options uh, through people through messaging, right? Uh, before they arrive, hey, do you want to have uh, early check in through the automated messaging? Uh, if it's the late checkout the day before they leave, they're going to receive a, a message saying, hey, check out us at 11. If you want to stay longer, you know, here's the late checkout, uh, you know, item if you want to purchase it. So, again, like Bryce said, uh, wait, so when I looked at it, the numbers, it was 2% of revenue, uh, you know, a while back, and it was very significant. So it's like it grows along with your property count. So you can imagine as you, you know, keep uh, adding properties, then, you know, that the 2% becomes, you know, significant at times. Yeah. And maybe just real quick, um, Jim, if you can touch base a little bit on the logistics as far as, um, you know, the offering the late check in early checkout, you do kind of have to manage that. You've got to look at the calendar. You've got to make sure that's available. And I know sometimes that scares people off, but maybe when they see the 2% figure, it, it's less scary. Um, but maybe, you know, if you can talk a little bit about just logistics and, and how you yeah. guys manage that. You know, usually, you know that that's that's interesting, right? Because this revenue also carries some 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 logistics, some planning, right? Uh, you know, in the worst case, in the worst case that there's a late checkout with an early check-in, which that would give us just one hour to uh, to service the unit, uh, then you know we need to find a way to do that, right? And then we just play around with the with the housekeeper uh, with the housekeeper's uh, you know schedule. We'll make sure that somebody is right there at 1250. So, you know, we go in, uh, we're up, most of our apartments are one bedroom. So for the most part, uh, you know, we do, we turn uh, a unit between one and two hours. If it needs to be speedy, you know, it's closer to one hour. So th these are not big properties, right? When there's a big property, you know, three bedroom house with exterior area, but then it becomes a little bit harder. Uh, but, Given, you know, the, despite that, not many, you're not going to find that many, you know, uh, that many reservations are going to come in with a late checkout and an early check-in at the time. It does happen. And when it happens, it's just a matter of priorities, prioritizing that unit, make sure that you're on time right there, you know, with five to 10 minutes of buffer to make sure that you have that complete hour to, to have it ready. So, yes, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it might happen. It might happen if you have a few checkouts on that day. Uh, it could it could lead to a potential you know disaster, but in experience, not you know we never have more than three people at the same time you know create this kind of Armageddon where three late checkouts, three early check ins, same unit. So so far, you know hasn't been the case. So it it will eventually happen when it happens. I'll let you know. But for now, it's been okay to manage. And right. we manage twenty eight properties, so you know we we do have some some volume, not much, right? Uh, yeah. We you know we have some volume, but you know so, so far it's been okay. And yeah, you've had some same day turnovers where you had a late checkout uh, and an early check in for the same property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've had those. We, yeah, yeah, we've had those. So, you know, that's what I was saying. It gives us just an hour to service that unit. So that's why we need to, you know, be there on time to make sure it turns, uh, like I said, our units are one bedroom apartments for the most part. So it's not like you're cleaning this, you know, huge house. So, you know, we're able to do it on a, on a, on a, on a, nice. on, you know, on an hour. So, so yeah, so far so good. And that's a great point. I'll just you know show here on the screen when you're creating your marketplace items, you can choose which properties they apply to. And so if you have a larger property where it's maybe just not feasible, 
um, then then you can disable that marketplace item from from showing there. And then just back up to the top here, pretty straightforward configuration as far as you know setting up the title, you know a, a brief summary of of you know what the marketplace item is, and you can even add a more detailed subscript or description down here below. Um, what's the price? Um, if there's a, a quantity description, um, like people, hours, things like that, you can add that here. And then also specify the cancellation policy uh, as well as a, a custom image associated with that item. So pretty straightforward and easy to set up um, and um, easy to, to get up and running. And, and like I said, this these uh, marketplace items can also apply to the checkout flow in the property management platform. So when a guest is checking out, um, you can show these same marketplace items as you do within the guidebook. And in this case, by checking out, you mean when they're on the website making the reservation uh, and they're, they're checking out of ordering the reservation, not actually leaving, checking out, leaving. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yes, absolutely. When they're making the reservation. Yeah. Any other questions on marketplace that have come up or David, anything else you wanted to point out here? Nope. Well said. Okay. All right, great. Let's jump back. Um, so next on the list, as far as generating and driving revenue, um, we are going to talk a little bit about our Viator integration. And um, David, you've been you've been very supportive and uh, fielding questions in the background there. But you have done a great job with this. And so JM and I are going to actually kick it over to you to share a little bit of, of what you've set up for Viator and how that works. Sure. You want me to go first? Um, I'll, I'll add some information and then JM, I'd love to hear how, how you're doing it as well. So let me, let me share my screen. And, um, hold on. Let's do a window. Here we go. I think we got the right one. All right. I'm sorry. I will digress for one second. I brought it up so everyone can see, uh, <laughs> Flash and myself celebrating uh, being preferred plus uh, status for Airbnb. I took out all my Airbnb swag merch uh, and we had a little party. So just a few things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, how we have the integration with Viator, it's easy money for you. 8% Eight, 8 commission that you get just for uh, making a better guest experience uh, for the guests and providing them with information on tours that they kind of want to do anyways. You're the one person that they know and trust oftentimes in that uh, place that they're visiting. So they're looking at you to make their life easier for doing all the fun stuff. Uh, so there's a few ways in which we go about it. Um, you sign up for an account on Viator. We have a help article about that. And then you get an ID and you just put that ID in user settings right here. Um, so you can see mine ends with 60535. You'll, you'll see that in a minute. And by doing that automatically, then the guidebook has sponsored via tour activities where you'll get 8%. So if I go to attractions, these will automatically appear. You don't need to do anything. And uh, if I click into here, it's got the card with more information. When you click on buy tickets, it takes you over to Viator and you can see the parameters are passed through and you can see there's there's your ID as part of the parameters. And so you're going to get credit now if they buy that one thing specifically or really anything else now. So if they look around and buy anything else, you'll get 8%. So we automatically include a bunch of recommendations from your area. Uh, if you have a paid subscription, you can remove it if you don't want to want them to appear. That's in the themes category, but we're talking about making money here. So um, you can actually choose how many you want. If you want four to show six, eight. Uh, and we just kind of automatically query um, via tour near the address and pull some in. So that's a great kind of total hands off way of doing it. Create your via tour account, put your ID in and you have a bunch of cards ready to go. Uh, so that's one way. Again, you don't really have control of that. We're doing it for you. So another way is actually to make a curated section with all your favorite recommendations. 
So here I have a custom category, favorites. And these are all Viator activities. If I click into one, I saw a magic show here. I loved it. I added some personal stuff to the card. So this is a custom card that I'm making on the back end, like any recommendation. So here's me and my daughter with the magician and kind of making it personal. Uh, and then when there's a link, it goes to Viator with, with the ID. So how do you do this um, very easily, enthusiastically? So uh, if we go back to the attractions, so this is the, the 101 version. We have a help article on it as well, but just a very, um, very quickly here again, San Francisco Botanical Garden, buy tickets. You want to take these parameters after the question mark, okay? When you see a question mark, all that stuff is kind of marketing stuff to, to track. Um, this is really what the URL is. So I just cut, uh, you see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste it again. I'm just gonna cut all this stuff afterwards. And this is this is really what the, the URL is for um, the botanical gardens here. Um, so now I find whatever tour I want to include, let's say it's uh, Haight-Ashbury here, this one. And then you add what I just cut, you add that to the end here. And this is the new URL for that item. So when you go into the back end, Go to recommendations and let's find the magic show. Here we go, magic. When you're making the card, there's that one section here for the website. So then you just paste in what you cut a second ago. So it's whatever that Viator URL is with that special extra parameters afterwards. So now you can make a custom category and make all your uh, custom recommendation cards of your favorite recommendations, and you know that's going to appear uh, all the time in a certain area. So two more things about that. Uh, you can also go in Viator and search San Francisco, for example, whatever your town, whatever your city is, your destination matches, I'll click on San Francisco. And now this is Viator's like San Francisco page, and they have all sorts of tours and activities divided into all these categories. It's, it's, there's so much out there to choose from. So you can actually take this page and once again, add the, the parameters, that question mark and everything after that. And then you can send people directly to here as well. So that's what I did in my guidebook, just to show. I have favorites and again, I have individual recommendations and then i also have everything you can imagine that's right here so i click on that and a complete list of every possible tour and activity visit website and that takes you to what i just showed you a second ago and as you can see my my parameters are are in here um so i'm going to get credit i'm going to get eight percent for anything that's purchased purchased there's some of these tours you know two hundred dollars a family of four eight hundred dollars I'm getting 8% of that. That's, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. David, would you mind, there was a question on creating your favorite card, creating that custom category. Would you mind just showing that real quick? Sure. So in the dashboard, we have categories right here. Uh, again, this is for the subscription version. So power hosts and above. Uh, so you can create a new category and you put in the, the category name, and you choose actually if it's gonna be a recommendation category or a house manual category. So you can actually have multiple, if you want, uh, you can have multiple house manual categories, and these kind of cards are different from recommendation cards. They're not, they don't appear on the map, and you can have like video cards like that. So we've seen multiple house manual categories, one where it's maybe like, information about the house and then another one that's to do videos or how to how to videos and there's a whole bunch of videos and it looks really nice uh so so you make the the custom category that's how you do that and then under recommendations when you're making the recommendation card you choose the category at the very bottom 
you choose which category you want it to be in. All right. Other other questions or uh, JM, I know you've done some stuff on this as well, and I and I believe on your on your website, not your guidebook, you've actually done this little trick and and done some links uh, over. Yeah, to you can. Yeah, you can. And uh, once one, once you sign up, uh, right, you need to sign up to get that partner ID uh, in there. Uh, once you sign up, you're able to create uh, custom links inside uh, in a Viadler, which we also add in the, in the hyperlink, our, our company name, just to increase awareness and, you know, everywhere that we can splash a name, we'll, you know, we will do it. Uh, you can create those custom links and then you can track the performance of those links as well. And, the and the Viadler, uh, you know, back and you can see how many clicks, you know, each link has, has, uh, you know, has gotten. So we, uh, technically what we do is we look at the other activities that they're in, in Viadler for our city uh that co you know uh in combination with what we know about the city you know in puerto rico a lot of people like to go to the rainforest because it's pretty cool and, and people like to hike and stuff so you know that's that's one of the things that we looked at uh at my other final tour that has you know a lot of reviews is pretty ranked well well that tells you that probably a lot of people have have booked it so you know the probabilities of getting booked are pretty high we just uh, like David said, we create a custom link with that, whatever name and partner ID, and then we drop that and create a created list of activities of what we think you know we you know we would like to do if we were in the position of the guest. Uh, so we have a few in there. We got uh, um, eating tour, the food tour in San Juan. We got the Yunque with transportation. Uh, and then we got the LED. Yeah, we got the LED, uh, and then we got the Old San Juan, you know, walking tour, which is our four things that are very common for people that come to visit, you know, Puerto Rico. And it's good to, you know, generate that 8% because, you know, again, it's it's kind of free money. It's just, just offering an advice, you know, uh, and an activity that would enhance the stay. People will be, you know, very thankful. That, oh, th thank you for the recommendation. And in the meantime, you also generate some, you know, extra revenue, which is nice. Yeah, these are great. And I, and I thought that was actually a, a really brilliant idea, Jam, to look at the reviews <laughs> and kind yeah. of, you know, target, you know, those that, you know, guests are really going to be satisfied and, and are popular. Um, a great way to, to approach that. One other thing that I'll share here, and David, you mentioned this, and we did get a couple of questions about um, kind of showing recommendations. And so um, jumping back to this themes card, again, we'll, we'll touch on this section a, a couple of times uh, today. Uh, towards the bottom of the theme section, you'll see sponsored recommendations to show. And so David mentioned that you can kind of crank that all the way up to 11 uh, or 48, technically. Um, or, you know, you can you can show none. Again, you know, we encourage you to, you know, try and show as many opportunities to get a conversion as possible. But if you if you select none, then you're going to have to go ahead and add those custom uh, options like you saw that uh, JM has over here in their activities. And I, you know, I would, I'd recommend that if you spend a couple minutes, then you're in full control. You get your own custom category. Each of the categories are its own custom link as well. So you can include the link to your favorites uh, category and send that out, you know, a few days before the guest arrives. Hey, if you want to book a tour, here are some of my favorite ones that I recommend. And it goes straight to that section of the guidebook. You have 100% control of it. You're curating it. You're putting in your favorite tours and activities. You know your customer the best. You know what they're going to be interested in. Um, the default way we have it is, again, we're kind of just, we're guessing. We don't know you. We don't know your customers. We're, we're taking some and putting it in there. It's the easy way of doing it. Um, but spend, you, you guys are on this webinar, so clearly you're interested. So spend a few minutes and, and make it nice and curated, and that'll really increase your conversions. Eight. And right. they're everywhere. I see a question about that. Sorry, Bryce, one more thing. Viator, yeah. they're a division um, of TripAdvisor, and they connect with tour and activity companies and really tour and activity softwares all over the world. They have tens of thousands of activities everywhere. So if you're not sure, go go check it out and see what they have. You'll, you'll be surprised. There will probably be many uh, items there. Yeah. 
great. And and just again, one more reminder here. I know I've worked through this with customers, so it can be a little bit confusing when you create that custom category, like like David mentioned, you add that here under the category section. And then you also have to choose which recommendation cards you assign to that. So that's a separate section. So here in recommendations, you've got all of these different these items and, and they apply to different categories within the guidebook, um, but but your tours and activities are, are very much the same. And so, you know, when it comes to, you know, making any any kind of recommendation or suggestion, you've got the category itself, and then you also have um, the recommendations that live within this. So like, I know the night kayaking was one that we saw there. And so you can see uh, JM has that all set up. He's got the custom image, um, the description, the URL as David had shared, and then um, you see that that's assigned to the activities category within the card here. So just double stating that because I know sometimes that gets a little bit confusing. People get stuck on how do I add recommendations to that new category I just created. Great. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump back here. We are doing pretty well on our timing. And so I just want to get into our last couple. That is Viator. And um, finally, we just want to share a, a strategy and again, a custom category. We're staying with the theme there that, that many customers and JM's been, been using uh, very well here within his guidebooks. And that is a book again category. So when, when guests are in your guidebook, why not share the other properties, the other uh, um, beautiful properties that you have available? Um, you can do that by creating a custom category called book again. And just one call out here that um, you, you would think uh, was kind of a no brainer, but make sure if you're going to add this custom category, make sure your website's ready to convert. Uh, make sure that um, you have uh, everything set up in a way that, that your customers are, are ready to go, whether that's through kind of the default direct booking website, uh, like we have through the PMP, or if you're gonna go a little bit more custom on your website and work with some of our awesome partners to customize your website, make sure that's ready to go um, because that, that book again um, link will get some visits and it'll get some traffic. So let's hop over here and take a look at creating that. Again, a little bit of redundancy here, but it is a category. So if you hit the category section, you're gonna see this custom book again category here. Um, and you can see that uh, JM has this all filled out. He's used the uh, hex key to pull in the, the color that matches his brand and um, pretty straightforward once you get that category added. Um, but then you also need to go ahead and add some recommendations. And so he has created, you can see towards the top here, all of these book again recommendations link out to his properties. And so he's got the property address, information, um, as well as um, you know, some images of, of the property, which is a, a great way to just share a little bit of a sneak peek. And then he's linking down here um, back to the OTM Rentals website um, for those guests to go through. You can include a phone number as well, not a bad idea, just to give them an option to call you if they wanna talk about that property. And then you can choose which guidebooks that um, custom uh, recommendation assigns to, or you can also, assign it to a template, which we didn't really get into today, but another great way to, um, to create custom sets of recommendations. So um, that is an example of his book again. JM, any, anything to add here on, we can just go ahead and show it here on your um, listing. We've got book again, anything else to add here? Yeah, no, it's, it's just another, like you said, it's just another effort to drive traffic, uh, right? With our new website, we just, you know, we did it a month ago. We use uh, um, one of hostful integrations, uh, Hots and Creative, for that. Which you know, we're we're pretty amazed because uh, this guidebook also powers our uh, obviously our direct booking engine, but also powers our recommendations in our website. Uh, so it, it lands you over here uh, for each each property individually. You'll be able to to select dates. Uh, so it's nice because the more traffic right that that we that we push through the website and say that the conversion rate is 1%, right, constant, then it says, how, how many people can you fit in that website? So 
you know, traffic wise to make sure that you convert. So it's a nice way to get awareness, get people on your website. If they book through an OTA, uh, you know, you can add, you know, the messaging, which we've been adding, which it's educating people with booking direct is just the best way, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to, to reserve with us just because it'll be uh, the most price efficient way. There's no guest fee in our case. So it's a, it's, it's a nice way to, to direct traffic to the website for sure. Excellent. Okay, that is our book again category. And we will go ahead and wrap up here with a couple of other related. Again, we've talked and, and hopefully you've noticed throughout here that uh, JM and team have really put a concerted effort into um, representing their brand and, and representing the look and feel of their brand within guidebooks. And so just wanted to show a couple other features within the system that we, we can customize um, and so I'll, I'll just state these here and then we'll go take a look, um, you know, adding your logo. Of course, you saw within the guidebooks there, customizing categories and colors. We talked a little bit about that already, um, even customizing the URL that, that guests see when they're viewing your guidebook. Um, we actually kind of hit on adding a welcome video in your introduction um, there, but just a couple other cool ideas. Jam, you guys mentioned that that kind of for inspiration, you're sharing a customized Spotify playlist as well. You know, when you when you send the guidebook over and you're trying to get those customers or those guests excited about their stay, you guys have created that that custom playlist, which is cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We create a small playlist. We refresh every 30, 40 days, 60 days. Uh, so we share it through, you know, through the messaging and and, and through the guidebook. Uh, we have a, a tab which is social media. And in there you have our Instagram, our Facebook, our YouTube, our Spotify. Uh, that again is another effort to make sure that we connect with people in one way or another, so that you know we can be you know top of mind when they when they think about coming to Puerto Rico. Awesome. Here's that social media again, the custom category. We're using a lot of customs here, which is really how you can unlock a lot of power here, and the Spotify playlist, other social links. Um, some great stuff there. I really like that. That's one that, that I hadn't seen uh, jam until you showed me that. So that's really cool. Well, yeah, that's a good one. Actually, just because we're in Puerto Rico, right? There, there's one way we created, was, which is the, the beaches, right? Puerto Rico is full of beaches. So we just created a custom category for, you know, for the beaches around the island. And I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. So you can see all the beaches that we recommend. Our properties are in San Juan, so more, pro more beaches will be in there. But uh, there's just a, you know, for few print beaches that we recommend that you can create that as well as a custom category. It's pretty cool. Excellent. And then just back here really quick, you, you all noticed that um, we've got the uh, OTM Reynolds logo. We've got this guidebooks.otmreynolds.com custom URL. Those are all housed within the themes, back to our themes section, one of our favorite places here. Um, for custom branding, you can see here he's uploaded his logo. Um, he's got a link back to his website behind the logo itself. Um, and then as we keep going down the page here, he's adjusted the colors of these default tabs. These are the default categories. I'm sorry, I should say categories within the guidebook. Those are all the, the uh, OTM blue that we've got matching there. And, um, and he's also kind of organized the order of his tabs um, there as well. So a uh, great way to, you know, be able to set that up, make sure that that look and feel is, is on point for all of your categories and all the colors that they see within the guidebooks um, and, and you're ready to go. One other item that um, I'll just mention here really quick, and this is often uh, when we're talking with customers, something that we really try to call out each of these sections. So even book again, social media, um, the activities, these are unique URLs. So keep that in mind um, up here on the top of the page. You can always grab that URL and in any of your guest communications, if you wanna link someone back directly to the activities section in the guidebook, if you give them that link um, and they click through, then it'll pass them right here to that section. And so um, that can be a great way to do that. You can also um, integrate some of these custom URLs back into the, to the property management platform um, under the custom data section. And so this is getting a little bit more advanced, but um, within the platform, you can have custom data. And so you can see 
uh, JM has some guidebook marketplace links to the, the marketplace section specifically for a couple of his properties. And, and he's pulling those into email communications. And so the whole idea behind the custom data fields is, is that you can use those to create unique variables within your emails and direct people you know, back to those unique variables like a marketplace link. So um, just a little, little bit of a user hack there for you to take a look at. And then um, maybe let me just open it up real quick. We're coming up on time here. Uh, so David, any follow-up questions on the last yeah. few items? Yes, a, a few things. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for all the questions. So first of all, a few people asked uh, me to repeat uh, the little hack I did for creating a custom category with the Viator links. And uh, if you go to our help site, help.hostly.com, and just search Viator, V-I-A-T-O-R, um, there will be an article there uh, that includes a video uh, of exactly what to do. So just follow that, and, and that, that should help. Um, one other quick comment, too, uh, we have a recommendations-only version of the guidebook. So you can make a guidebook, and in the, in the steps of making the guidebook, step one, two, three, four, there's that step five that maybe you never do, and that's recommendations-only. And that essentially is all the recommendation categories, but without the arrival, house manual, or departure uh, categories. Uh, so you can have that recommendations only guidebook and really publish that, promote that on social media. Uh, if you want to send it out in advance to guests before you want to send them your whole house manual, some people have done that. But really as a public thing, if people say I'm coming to San Francisco, what you know, what should I do? Even if they're not staying with you, it's a great way of kind of promoting your brand and promoting businesses. And if you have these uh, Viator activity, activities in there, getting some commission on that as well. Uh, so just a reminder about that too. Um, the domains, the custom domain, that really is a pro move. And I love that, JM, that you did that. Uh, there's a, a whole domain section. So that's not in themes. Um, we have a domains category on the dashboard. You can, you can see it there. The screen's a little bit small um, on, the, on the left domains. Uh, so, and that's how you go about, there's a little back and forth with a, uh, someone on our team because you got to set up some permissions in your you know, server account, your GoDaddy account or, or whatever. Um, but that's, that's a really pro move and, and just want to point that out. We also have a help article on that if you have questions or just, just email us and we'll walk you through that. And uh, JM, there were a couple questions. Actually, one question for me, one for JM. I'll, I'll answer the first one. Uh, is the email address captured here different than in the pre-arrival form with the PMS? Uh, so yes, excellent question. We do have a pre-arrival form for those that are using our property management platform as well. So after a guest makes a reservation, they fill out some information. And if they said it's for guests, we'll ask for four names and email addresses. And that is separate from the splash page. Uh, the splash page is anyone who's viewing the guidebook, they need to enter in their name and email address, um, phone number if you want, it's optional, you can add optional fields. Um, so that's an additional great way of getting contact information. Not everyone fills out the pre-arrival form, but if they're in destination and they wanna look at the guidebook, that splash page comes up. Um, so you can use one, you can use the other, you can use both, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, and, and JM, I think this is like a great wrapping things up question. Uh, it, so it seems like the question is you look at guidebooks not as an expense, as a cost center, but as a revenue center, as a way to, to drive revenue. And we've talked about different ways that are all, all making money from the guidebook. Do you have any idea what your ROI has been, your return on investment by using the guidebooks? It's way too high. Uh, <laughs> right yeah, answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I cannot give you a number right at the top of my head, but it's... Um, in, it's more than 10x, more than 20x. I mean, if you think about it, right? If if you were in the enterprise, uh, like we are, we uh, I think it's five dollars, you know, per guidebook. I mean, if you sell early check in at 25, 30, 40, 50 dollars, you know, it, that's almost a year worth of guidebooks right there. So, I mean, you know, the return is in the thousands. Uh, yeah, for sure. Wow, that's awesome. No, no, absolutely, absolutely, and and again, it's, it's it's revenue that is sort of effortless, right? 
uh, because, uh, you know, again, the check-in is already going to happen. The checkout is already going to happen. People are going to go to activities, you know, to do stuff. They're going to still go to the rainforest. Either they go with your link or with somebody else's link or, or word of mouth. So, you know, all these things are eventually going to happen. You, yeah, at the beginning, there's some legwork between finding the experiences and sitting on the marketplace. And yeah, there's some, there's some work. Uh, but after that, it's basic maintenance. And then, you know, uh, you know, the returns are very high. Mm -hmm. Awesome. A uh, couple more similar questions actually just came in. Um, shout out to Michael Brown, who uses QR codes in the mm -hmm. home to direct people to different sections of the guidebook. Uh, so we have a, a standard QR code for, for the guidebook in general, and you can print that out, uh, put it on the refrigerator, put it on the, the you know, dining room table or whatever. Uh, and you can also make QR codes for specific sections as well. Uh, so, JM, do you have any other tips or uh, best practices on how you share the guidebook with the guests? Yeah, we share the guidebook uh, at booking confirmation along with the pre-arrival. We check, uh, we share the guidebook uh, two days before they arrive just to let them know, hey, if you have any questions, here's where the answers most likely will be. If you have any recommendations, this is where it will be. And then throughout the stay, we send out some messages about recommendation about restaurants, uh, you know, brunch, the Spotify playlist. So we're in, in each, pretty much in each, uh, in each message that goes out, see via the check in follow up, check out follow up, check out check in, whatever the, the you know the, the message is, there's always a guidebook link nice. to either the arrival form or an activity or a restaurant or a playlist or something just to get them in the guidebook and get that email so that later on we can you know retarget them. That's awesome. Automating your emails and text messages and make, making yep. sure even from the, from the moment the reservation is made that confirmation email, you know, I'll be in touch as it gets closer to your arrival. In the meantime, check out this guide, but that's going to decrease a lot of those random questions of that trickle in, like, you know, what's parking like, or is there a supermarket nearby or something like that? Um, a pro tip that I heard from uh, another customer too, is that whenever they get a question, they, instead of responding with an answer, like, you know, emailing the answer, texting the answer, they bring up the guidebook and go to that section of the guidebook that has the answer, and then they'll send the URL. So they're redirecting the guests back to the guidebook. And, and they said, sometimes I'll get one question, but then I never get a second question from the guest. Yep. Great. One, one other thing we mentioned, David, but I realized I didn't show over on um, JAM's website here for the Discover Puerto Rico section. Um, he's actually linking back to recommendations from within the guidebook. And this is something um, that Eli and the team at Hudson helped you guys do, right? But I, I thought that was a really cool use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was something that was, uh, yeah, done by them uh, and and very big fan because not only, you know, again, it's effortless because it's work already done. So, it got, it, you know, uh, Hudson just, just pushed it. At the same time, it helps with your SEO on your website. So you have all this, you know, keywords in here and activities and people always searching beaches. So it also helped us, uh, you know, that way to drive traffic to our, to our website. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Ellie with Hudson Creative Studio. They're uh, the first integration partner to integrate with our guidebooks as well and our guidebook API. So they are pulling recommendations uh, from the guidebook as well as uh, all the information they're pulling from the property management software. Excellent. All right, David, I think I think it's time for the big finish. There they are. <laughs> Together. All right. Nice. Good picture. Fun stuff. JM took me to an awesome neighborhood uh, when I was visiting Puerto Rico. And JM, congrats on everything that you've done uh, with the guidebooks. You really are a power user. You are a role model and inspiration. And we really appreciate you sharing all your knowledge and tips with everyone. And thank you for creating the guidebooks. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for attending. And we'll see you next month for our next Hostful University webinar. Thanks, Jam. Thanks, David. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye.